In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sermon text for this, the celebration of St. John the Evangelist Day, comes from his Gospel, St. John chapter 1. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the Gospel of our Lord. My dear friends in Christ, uh, members and friends of St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church. In the early 1980s, American businesses fell in love with the mission statement. Now, businesses crafted statements to define their existence, who they really were. Businesses wanted a, a single message to encourage and engage every single worker in the purposes of that industry. Well, no nowadays, a lot of business consultants, a lot of businesses realize that the mission statement never really did what it was supposed to do. And that's because mission statements were filled with, with buzzwords and jargon, and they were generically vague. I mean, you could take a, a, a mission statement from one corporation and fit into another corporation that did something totally different, and you'd never know the difference. And to prove that, I'm going to read you two mission statements, and I'll tell you up front, well, one of them is a real one, and one of them is a fake one, and you get to decide. So here's the first mission statement. The mission of our company is to deliver superior quality products and services for our customers and communities through leadership, innovation, and partnerships. Okay, that was number one. Here's the second one. Our mission is to continue to efficiently facilitate diverse methods of empowerment and professionally disseminate performance-based deliverables to meet our customers' needs. Now remember, one of these is fake and one of these is real, but it's hard to tell the difference between the fake one and the real one, isn't it? Well, the real one was the first one. It was, it might still be, the mission statement of Wendy's fast food restaurants. And I think uh, about 20 years ago, Wendy's paid a consulting firm about $50,000 to come up with this uh, mission statement for their fast food restaurant. And the funny thing is, it doesn't even mention hamburgers. Now, the second mission statement was the fake one. It comes from the cartoon Dilbert. If you remember Dilbert, it was a cartoon dedicated to making fun of mocking the foibles of American business culture, including mission statements. So, why am I talking about mission statements? Well, the church in America loves to imitate corporations in America for better or for worse. And so, in the mid-80s, churches started doing what corporations were doing. Churches wanted to come up with their own mission statement. They spent a lot of time and energy and money developing their own special, unique mission statement for their congregation. But guess what? Church mission statements sounded almost identical to corporate mission statements. Oh, sure, the churches took out some of the business-oriented words and they threw in a couple of bible churchy words, but pretty much they were the same. <clears throat> now, I know I'm, I'm sounding a bit cynical. Imagine that. But please don't get me wrong. Church mission statements are not, by nature, wicked or evil or sinful. And they may even some, serve some good purpose. But church mission statements are a lot like business mission statements. Church mission statements are filled with all sorts of buzzwords and, and all sorts of just general, generally meaningless phrases. In other words, you don't really know what they're saying because you can take one mission statement from one church and apply it to another church and vice versa, and you hardly know which one is which. But that's not the real problem with, with mission statements, their generality and their vagueness. The real problem with church mission statements is that they focus... They focus on what people do. Now you might be thinking, well, duh, pastor, <laughs> that's what a mission statement is all about. What people do. Getting everybody on the same page to do the same work for the good of the institution. And yeah, I mean, Christian mission statements can help you do that. I mean, and Christians, Christians are supposed to be doing things. We are supposed to be busy for the Lord. Uh, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, that whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, 
We should do it all for the glory of God. And Paul says we should do everything in a fitting and orderly way. So Christians must do things. But the mission of the church, what the church is all about, is never, or at least never primarily, about what we do. The mission of the church is Jesus Christ. The mission of the church is always for us to be the recipients of what Christ has done for us and for our salvation. Now, our short text from the Gospel according to St. John the Evangelist tells us what Jesus did for us and for all people. Our text says, John, that's, that's John the Baptist, not John the Evangelist, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So what is the mission of the church? What is the purpose of the church? Why does the church exist? What is the church good for? Well, we might think to ourselves that, well, the church's mission is to do what St. John the Baptist did, to, to point people to Jesus as their only Savior. And certainly that's something we must do. I mean, it's all over the Bible how we should share the good news of Jesus Christ. For example, in Peter's epistle, he tells us that Christians must always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that is in you. Now again, that's a good passage. It's from the Bible. But this passage's passage focuses on what you and I should do. And any time that you are talking about what we should do, you are talking about the law. Now the law is good. The law is actually, is truly God's word. So it has to be good. It's God's word. But God never intended the law to take center stage. Instead, God gave the law to prepare us for something far more important and something far more glorious than the law. St. Paul says in Galatians, the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now, those are fancy words from St. Paul, and St. Paul tends to use fancier words, but John the Evangelist keeps it simple. But they both say the same thing. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And St. John the Evangelist writes in his epistle lesson, he writes this, Jesus Christ is the righteous one, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. That, my friends, is the gospel. And the gospel is good news for you and me, for the whole world. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now in catechism class, students learn the difference between law and gospel. The law says do. The gospel says done. So, the mission of the church is the gospel. And it is not, again, primarily that we proclaim the gospel to other people. No, the primary mission of the church is for us to sit there and listen, whether in church or whether on video. First and foremost, the church is for us to have the gospel preached to us. First and foremost, that to be the church means that we are objects of God's mercy, objects and recipients of God's love and favor and kindness. To be the church means to receive all that forgiveness stuff that Jesus did by his life and by his death. And so again, the mission of the church, what the church is all about, is to have Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, is to have Jesus Christ take away all of our sins by what he did for us and for our salvation. And Jesus Christ did a lot for us and for our salvation. He was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary. He was born in humility, lying in a manger. He was tempted by Satan for 40 days in the desert. He calmed the storms on the Sea of Galilee. He proclaimed God's word in synagogue and out in open fields for thousands to hear him. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He raised the dead. He gave us his true body and blood in the sacrament of Holy Communion. 
so that we could feast on him for eternal life. And then Jesus prayed fervently for us in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then later, a few hours later, Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross to pour out his holy precious blood to save us. And then Jesus conquered death by leaving his grave empty. And then 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus paved the way for us to go to heaven by his ascension into heaven. Now to receive all these things, to receive all the blessings that Jesus did by everything he did in his life, well, that is the reason for our existence. That's the mission of the church. And that's why the church exists, to receive the blessings of Jesus Christ. And that's also why you come to church, or that's why you listen to these videos. You want Jesus to enter the door of your heart and to fill your life. Because when Jesus is in your heart and in your life, he calms your fears and he calms you when failures disturb you. Jesus Christ soothes your jagged conscience when guilt and shame torment you. And yes, you come to church to have Jesus pick you up and carry you in his arms. He carries you because he knows that you cannot walk in the path of obedience to God's law perfectly. But Jesus can. So he picks you up and he carries you on that path of obedience to God's law. And because you are with Jesus, because he is carrying you, his holiness is your holiness. His obedience is your obedience. His righteousness is your righteousness. And you come to church and you watch these videos so that you can see Jesus raise his, his nail-stained hands to bless you. And Jesus blesses you by keeping you in the one true faith. And Jesus shines his lovely face upon you whenever you cry out to him, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus blesses you with his peace. It is the peace of God that transcends all human understanding because it is the peace that flows from the loving heart of God that forgives all your sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, earlier I introduced the service by saying that we are celebrating the festival of St. John the Evangelist and we are named, our congregation is named St. John's in his honor, but you might be thinking, well, Pastor, you haven't really talked a whole lot about St. John the Evangelist, but to be like St. John the Evangelist, I think I'm getting your point, Pastor, is to not talk about yourself, but to talk about, to talk about Jesus and to point to Jesus as, as the only Savior of the world. So the purpose of our church, then, is to do what St. John did and, and always keep the focus on Jesus Christ. Well, yes, we should always keep the focus on Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we dare not call ourselves either St. John's Lutheran Church nor even a Christian church. But yet, our mission and living up to the name St. John's is not so much doing what St. John's did, St. John did. No, living up to the name of St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church means that we receive what St. John received. And John received the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And may we always find a peace and comfort and joy and hope and our salvation in our mission. And what's our mission? Well, to receive, through faith, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.